Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on probability of simple events. What you'll learn today is how to write probability and how to find the complement. So let's start with our vocabulary startup. Probability is the chance that some event will occur. A simple event is one outcome or a collection of outcomes. What is an outcome? Well, the mathematical definition is a possible result in a probability experiment. A real-world definition might be the way that something turns out. Next, we have our real-world link. For a sledding trip, you randomly select one of the four hats shown. Complete the table to show the possible four outcomes. Well, the first outcome was already done for us. You could randomly close your eyes and pick a green. Or you could randomly pick a blue. Or you could randomly pick a red. Or you could randomly pick a purple. So if we wanted to write a ratio that compares the number of blue hats to the total number of hats, well, there's one blue hat over a total of four hats. So describe a hat display in which you would have a better chance of selecting a red hat. Well, what if you had a display with nine red hats and two blue hats. You have a much better chance of getting a red hat there than a blue hat. And so our key concept is probability. And in words, the probability of an event is a ratio that compares the number of favorable outcomes to the number of possible outcomes. And the way this is written in symbols, the probability, so P, parentheses of the event we're looking for, the number of favorable outcomes over the number of possible outcomes. The probability of a chance event is a number between 0 and 1 that expresses the likelihood of the event occurring. Greater numbers indicate greater likelihood. A probability near zero indicates an unlikely event, and a probability around one-half indicates an event that is neither unlikely nor likely. And lastly, a probability near one indicates a likely event. Probability can be written as a fraction, decimal, or percent, and our little bar here summarizes everything we just read up here. And you can see the fraction, decimal, and percent for a 25% probability, or one-fourth, as being unlikely, and so on in this table. Outcomes occur at random if each outcome is equally likely to occur. So in our first guided example today, there are six equally likely outcomes if a number Q with sides labeled 1 through 6 is rolled. Find the probability of a 6, or which is also the probability of rolling a 6. So P6 means the probability of rolling a 6. Well, there's only one 6 on the number cube. So the number of favorable outcomes is 1. The number of possible outcomes is 6. So we write this 1 over 6 which can also be written as 17% or 17 hundredths. Next, in our got it question, a coin is tossed. 
find the probability of the coin landing on heads, write your answer as a fraction, percent, and decimal. Well, if we look at the outcomes, if I toss a coin, I could either get heads or I could get, I don't know how to draw a tail. <laughs> so, if you're looking for the probability of getting heads, that is one outcome out of two possible outcomes. And so one half is our solution, which can also be expressed as 50% or 0 0.55 tenths. In our second guided example, find the probability of rolling a 2, 3, or 4 on the number cube. Well, the word or indicates that the number of favorable outcomes needs to include the numbers 2, 3, and 4. So we're then looking for the probability of 2, 3, or 4. Our number of favorable outcomes, well, there's 3 of them. Out of the same possible outcomes, 6. So 3 out of 6, which simplifies to 1 half, which again is 50% or 5 tenths. What about our got it question? The spinner at the right is spun once. Find the probability of each event. Write each answer as a fraction, percent, and decimal. So in B, we are looking for the probability of an F. Well, let's examine our spinner. We have the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. Each letter, A through J, is used once. And there are a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 possible choices. So the bottom part of our probability here is going to be 10. And how many of those are favorable? How many of those are an F? Well, just 1 out of the 10. So 1 over 10 is our fraction solution. So we can write 1 over 10, which is also 10%, which as a decimal is 0 0.1. What about a D or a G? Well, we still have 10 possible outcomes. We're looking for a D or a G. Well, that's two favorable outcomes. So this can be written as 2 over 10, which can be simplified to 1 fifth. We do want to simplify our fractions. So our answer for C is 1 fifth, which is the same thing as 20% and 0 0.2 or 2 tenths. What about the probability of a vowel? Well, to get a vowel, our vowels on this are the letters A, E, and I. Those are the vowels on the spinner. So that's actually three letters out of the ten possible. So this is a three out of ten, which is 30% and 0 0.3 or 3 tenths. Now the second part of our lesson deals with find probability of the complement. Complementary events, not just, you know, hi, these are nice events, they're complementary to each other. No, complementary events are two events in which either one or the other must happen, but they cannot happen at the same time. For example, a coin can either land on heads or not land on heads. The sum of the probability of an event and its complement is 1 or 100%. So in our guided example here, our third guided example, find the probability of not rolling a 6 in example 1. Remember, example one was the number cube, numbers one through six. So there are a couple ways to handle this question. 
they take a look at the probability of not rolling a 6 and the probability of rolling a 6 are complementary. True story. So the sum of the probabilities is 1. Also true. The probability of not rolling a 6 and the probability of rolling a 6, well, that should add up to be 100%. So the probability of rolling a 6 plus the probability of not rolling a 6 equals 1, which is the 100%, because they are complements. So, 1 sixth plus the probability of not getting a 6 equals 1. What does this have to be but 5 sixths? So the probability of not rolling a 6 is 5 out of 6, 5 sixths, or 83%, or about 83 hundredths. Let's look at our got it E to see if we can solve this in a couple different ways. A bag contains five blue, eight red, and seven green marbles. A marble is selected at random. Find the probability the marble is not red. And so what we're looking for here is you know, the probability of getting a red plus the probability of not getting a red is going to equal 1. Well, what is the probability of getting a red? That's 8, these are 8 red, out of, out of 20, as there are 20 marbles. So 8 twentieths plus the probability of not getting a red still needs to equal 1. And so 8 twentieths plus what is equal to 1? Well, that would be 12 twentieths, which simplifies into 3 fifths by dividing by 4 on top and bottom. And 3 fifths can also be written as 60% or 0 0.66 tenths. Now that's one way of using and finding the probability using the complement. There is another way. What if we say that the probability of not getting a red is simply equal to the probability of getting a blue or a green? Because it is. If you don't get a red, you're going to get a blue or a green. Well, we still have a total of 20 marbles. And those that are blue or green, 5 plus 7, is 12. And 12 twentieths, again, simplifies to 3 fifths, which is the 60%, or 6 tenths. So two different ways that also use the same line of thinking to get you to the correct answer. In our last guided example, Mr. Herrera surveyed his class and discovered that 30% of his students have blue eyes. Identify the complement of this event, then find its probability. Well, if the probability event is that of getting blue eyes, then the complement to that would be not getting blue eyes. So the sum of the probabilities is 100%, so the probability of getting blue eyes plus the probability of not having blue eyes is going to be 100%. Either you got them or you don't. So what is that complement? Well, 30% are blue eyes, plus the probability of not blue eyes needs to equal 100%. And what's left? 30% plus what is 100%? Well, 70%. So the probability that a student does not have blue eyes is 70%, 7 tenths, or, well, 7 tenths is the fraction. And that is it for this lesson on the probability of simple events. Good luck.